Hello and welcome back to worldpokertour.com for coverage of WPT Amsterdam. I found an old familiar face. I'm not saying that he's old, but I've seen him uh, for many, many years on the tournament circuit. Andreas Hoivold, of course, EPT winner back in the day in Dortmund. Um, I've seen you on TV a lot as well in high stakes poker. But first of all, what have you been up to lately? Uh, after playing high stakes poker, as you mentioned, I moved to Vegas. I screwed up, I got married and divorced and uh, all things I shouldn't do. But that's history now, so now I can focus on poker again and start playing a little bit more. Wow, I mean, that's, that's quite, a, quite a strong sentence there to just throw that out there. Um, let's, let's go back to the, to the positive stuff initially. Okay. How did you manage to get onto High Stakes Poker? Because that was such an exclusive TV show. Yes, uh, to be honest, I, it happened while one time I got home after having out drinking a little bit too much. And I had the one guy renting uh, in my place and uh, he said that they played so bad and I agree with it and then it was like, okay, you should be on it. Yeah, I should. And then it, I ended up at like 3.30 a.m. calling Thor Hansen and asking if he could get me a high sex poker. Yes, of course, no problem, he said. Knowing Eric Drake, he, they, they're best friends. And uh, he called Eric Drake and, and Eric Drake said yes. So I had, I, Eric Drake called me first and I had to transfer a minimum of $200,000 to the Gold Nuggets and I had to have a meeting with him first then I did that and they said I was okay to be in it. I mean, that's, that's really, that sounds really simple but still $200,000 is, is a lot of money to put up. Um, how did you experience being on that show and how do you look back on it now? Well, uh, it, I wasn't at all like prepared for it. I, the highest I played before was like 100, 100, 200 online, but usually I played like 1020 and 2550. So this was like totally out of my league usually. But I had won that amount approximately that year in tournaments, and it was also had me the same in the stock market. So I had I had a good year. So I'm thinking, okay, it's like one of my profits goes to hell if I lose. And uh, well, I I I went. I played. It was. Uh, a bad session when I played for four and a half hours and I had pocket seven since my best hand and uh, against those players it's not very good to not have any hands and I also really had bad timing on one of my bluffs against Phil Ivey when he had flopped the set and then well I tried and uh, he didn't want to fold his set so I ended up losing 55,000 in that pot alone which is a little bit too much with nothing. And, and now all you have left are the good stories and the, and, the, and the sort of TV moments. Do you get recognized and do people talk about it still? Yes, I do. And it, it's like everything from cash games to, especially in, in Vegas, because sometimes I go out, especially when I'm with friends, we play like one, two, one, three or two, five or something. And then people recognize me and ask what I'm doing there. <laughs> so but I, it's like, I, especially when you're out having a few drinks and things, I, I like to play lower limits more than higher limits. And, it's all I, I've lost enough when I have not been totally sober before. So. <laughs> well, it's good to have you here in Amsterdam as a WPT, and hopefully you can make a bit of a run, and then we'll forget about high stakes poker that way. Uh, well, I, it would take more than one good run. If I if I win this one, then it will help, and a couple of bracelets is somewhere. Then everything will be forgotten. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for uh, being here, and you guys stay tuned to WorldPokerTour.com for more coverage.